We're back to discuss the night before, and hopefully you've seen the movie before you're watching this, because the movie is much more fun when you don't know what to expect or who's going to show up next. Um, you know, you've, you've got the three leads and their stories, their subplots, and how they intersect with all these other characters that are in the movie. Um, you know, they kind of, in the, in the trailers, they hint at the fact that Joseph Gordon-Levitt ends up on stage with Miley Cyrus at one point. That does happen. Um, there's little things like that that happen throughout the movie. The best cameo in the whole movie is Michael Shannon as this, like, drug-dealing angel. And <laughs> if you don't know who Michael Shannon is, it might not be as funny <laughs> Like, but I would say that probably most people have seen him, at least seen him in, like, Man of Steel or something like that. It's a cameo on par with Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder. Yes. It's it's way out of character, and it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, gosh, he, he just, every single scene is perfect perfect because he has this delivery like nobody else well yeah like the first time he shows up it's like suddenly there's a whole different movie going on <laughs> and then eventually he becomes part of the movie that they're all in like eventually you find out like who he is yeah. but then just like yeah i think i've i think i've probably earned these and he just like sprouts gigantic wings and flies away it, it's amazing. <laughs> like, this entire movie, you think he's just some crackpot drug dealer, and he's, like, that he was the great Gatsby angel. Yeah. He, inspired, he was inspired by the great Gatsby to create this amazing Christmas party that they all want to go to. <laughs> it's, it's so good. And you get this... It, it honestly, whenever he popped up, I thought back to the movie Scrooged. Mm -hmm. Because of, they had, he mentioned, you know, this weed is the ghost of Christmas uh, present, you know. Um, it made me think of the screwed up uh, angels that came to visit Bill Murray. Right. And you have that vibe throughout the entire movie, especially even with some other characters. I expected uh, that girl that Anthony Mackie keeps running into to end up being an angel as well. Oh, yeah. Because, because they all seemed omniscient. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was awesome. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was... It was really well done. There's, like... The movie had, like, seven... I'm exaggerating. It had a lot of screenwriters, so I don't know... You know, who contributed what or who put put what pieces into it um they do separate for a good part of the movie so they're they're all kind of doing their own storyline and the trailers make it out like that the main comedy of the movie is that seth rogan is like high as a kite and they're trying to like keep things together while he's high as a kite but that's really only like his subplot his like arc of the movie which is amazing right but, I mean, like, that's... So, at most, like, a third of the movie is shown to you in the trailer, and the rest of it is there for you to discover for yourself. Somebody who I've become a pretty big fan of recently, she's in this movie. Uh, the person who played Seth Rogen's wife. I don't know her name. She is hilarious. Yeah. I... I she was the best part of 22 Jump Street. Mm. And she was really good in her limited screen time on this one. Um, she was good. I mean, yeah. the other women, like Lizzie Kaplan was Joseph Gordon-Levitt's ex-girlfriend. And uh, Mindy Kaling was who they switched the phones with. Um, who was, like, trying to hook up with James Franco. <laughs> Which James Franco, his cameo is everything you would expect. Well, and his name is James in the movie, and he, this the spoiler version. So like, mm. you wonder if like they were trying to like intimate that he was James Franco playing James Franco. Yeah, 
you, you, you definitely get that feel, um, especially because other celebrities are playing themselves, uh, like Miley Cyrus. Uh, but <laughs> when he keeps getting dick pics and he's like, this one's from James. Oh my God, it's massive. And later he returns Mindy Kaling's phone and James shows up and it's James Franco. All the jokes kind of come together and it's, it's magical. Well, and that's what I was talking about with like them walking the line of what they can do with a narrated comedy. Like you can't show that in a PG 13, but they also don't like go, go crazy range. with it. Yeah. yeah. They don't go crazy with it. It's like, it's on a phone, like, in the background every once in a while. Or it's Seth Rogen, like, what is going on? Going, going back to the Michael Shannon scenes, the flashbacks and the flash forwards were awesome. The strip club scene was yeah. the best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you should go talk to your wife. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> Maybe get a dance. Where are we? We're in a strip club. 18 years from now. You should go sit with your wife. I'm going to go get a drink. Maybe have a dance. <laughs> it was so... And that's his <laughs> delivery. That's his delivery. It's perfect. And when you see him in this role, it just... It blows your mind. Yeah. It It's so good. Like, if you haven't watched this, shame on you. Well, I love, like, his <laughs> extremely detailed descriptions of what the weed will do. Where he's like... This weed will, like, tell you about the future, but only if you've been really, really honest with yourself up until this point. If you're so, going through some stuff. If you're going through some stuff, I wouldn't do it, but it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll take it. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <sighs> can, can we tell you to watch this movie enough? It's well, so great. Yeah, if you're watching this, hopefully you've seen it already. Yeah. And if not, then don't even worry. Like, yeah, we've just told you some of the best stuff in it, but it's it's still worth seeing. Yeah. It's still really funny. There, there are little nuances to the scenes that really push it over the top. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a classic. I think it's going to be one that people play... Around I was, Christmas, again. I was really afraid from the from the trailer that it was going to end up. Oh, well, this is the Hangover on Christmas. Yeah, that's my thing. I mean, I think they really they really overplay Seth Rogen's part of the movie, and that's really not what it is. But it's also hard to like sell an ensemble comedy in a trailer. It's like trying to explain what two hundred cigarettes is in a trailer, like. Well, it's not gonna happen. There's 30 people in this movie you have to keep track of, and what they all intersect in some way. So, yeah, it's great. Um, check it out if you like the movie. Do these, please like the video, subscribe, check out all the written and video reviews at dalemaxfield.com, and thanks for watching.